Hey everyone, Actoro64 here, and we are back in it! Yes! It has been a long freaking time since the Crash Team Rumble played through, which, by the way, two more weeks until that comes out. Well, at the time of recording, it's basically like 10 days, but still, I'm ready for that. But we're not going to worry about that right now. What we are worrying, worrying about is Ape Escape. I've already played 2 and 3, as well as Pumped and Primed on this channel before via stream. And I don't know if I really want to do a redo of those in a proper playthrough format, because I feel like those were pretty nice as it is. So, and even if I did, it probably wouldn't be until like way later. So, I guess maybe when they, if they ever release like something new to Ape Escape, like a new Ape Escape game, maybe, maybe. But right now, we're going to be playing the PS1 original. It feels good to finally go all the way back to the older games. And I mean all the way back. Let's do this. Station yet? Are we gonna get to go back in time? He said he'd be finished with it today. Let's go. I can't wait to check out the dinosaurs. And what about the future? Yeah, we'll keep talking because I'm going first. That's not fair. Hey, you wait know, up. better hurry up. I'll see you there. Hey, Professor! Spike, Jake, over here, watch out! Spike! The time station! <laughs> no, no, run you two! actually works. We did it, Natalie. We did it. The time station is complete. We don't have time for celebrating. We've got to do something. Spike, can you hear me? You must listen carefully. Something awful has happened. There's been an accident. The time station has been activated by Spectre and you're being transported back in time. You'll soon arrive in the Lost Land when dinosaurs roam the Earth. Spectre has sent the apes back in time to try to change the course of history. His plans for world domination have begun. And if we don't stop the apes, history will be changed forever. You're our only chance. Two of my gadget inventions, the Stun Club and the Time Net, were also caught in the transport. 
I want you to use them to catch the apes and send them back here. The stun club can be used to defend yourself against attackers. And when you use it on the apes, they'll be stunned. And you'll have an extra second to catch them with the time net. There isn't time for any monkey business, Spike. Our fate is in your hands. We're depending on you. Be careful. Okay, like seven minutes later, we can actually start going at this again. But yes, we are back into it. Get over here! Oh my god. It feels, it honestly feels kind of nice to be going back to like the old 64 bit games here. Hoya! In fact, where's the last one? Alright, here we go. Ah, oh, I forgot. They actually have these mandatory mailboxes that I always activate. It's not like the phone, or well, pretty much phone in both 2 and 3, where it's like, you could stick around in it. No, the second you get near these things, they just go on activation. Take this! Oh, frick. Let me try this again. Hoya! Yes! Nah, but I'm really excited to probably start playing some more Ape Escape, because... It's been way too long, and after so many things have happened between the Rumble video and now... I'm ready to- I'm ready to get back on the whole playthrough cycle again. Like, I'm actually really excited to get back onto this. So, other than this, Ape Escape, just like the 2 and 3, are pretty much the same premise. Except, in this game, it's about time, as opposed to the whole world here. The whole world on different locations. We still got our mini games, which, of course, we will be covering, because I'll be getting as many of the Spectre token, the Spectre coins throughout the levels as we can. I did already miss out on the first level. That's okay. At the end of this video, I pretty much will be going through all the Spectre coins that I can reach out at the time. At this time, here is where we can get all the training for all the gadgets. Unfortunately, this only applies to gadgets we get after this first level, because. And to be honest, there's really not much you need to learn about the Stunt Club and the Time Net. Stunt Club? You just hit things with it, uh, including some mandatory mailboxes, which always activate whenever you want them, whenever it just wants. And I just love the whole spinning with the camera trick with this. And of course, the Time Net, only used on monkeys. You hit them with this, and they're just ready to go. Okay, but let me go ahead and say... I already did play this on this, and just to, just for clarification in case this wasn't already clear, I am playing this through an emulator on this. I did want to do a playthrough of the game on the PS4 when it got released on there, but due to the limitations of my monitor not playing audio, and the issue of how audio is prioritized on the PS4, it would have caused problems, so it was just in my best interest to just do it this way. But anyway, let's get back in time with this, and just like Crash Bandicoot 3, we have to say it. Let's get... Alright, so right now we're on the Lost Land. We've already completed everything on this so far. We still got a few more things to do on this. There's, there's a reason I'm saying this right now, but... Let's just focus on moving forward with Primordial Ooze. Look what I've got! A new gadget! Check it out! This is the water net. Use it when you're underwater. I equipped it with an oxygen meter. I'm sending the new gadget over to you right now. Try it out in the training room. Without training, it will be too dangerous for you to continue on to the next area. Well, good luck and be careful. Another thing, in this game, all the training is entirely mandatory. There's no skipping these. But that's not really too big a deal, because all the training, just like with the other games, are pretty short. It's just really unfortunate that there's it's, look at how far I am look at how far I am from the mailbox. Look, what is that? Anyway. 
The mailbox is holy frick. Anyway, I was also saying the training is pretty much as simple as possible. You just do like two or three things with it, see how that can actually work with catching the monkeys here. You're supposed to use the right stick, as the mailbox will tell you. Is it gonna activate when I'm in water? Can it even activate? No? Okay. So, unlike all the other gadgets, this one only activates when you touch on water. You don't have to worry about the, the selecting this in the gadget selector. One really cool thing about this is that, just like with the other games, right like right from the very first game, you could just use the select button to go straight to the gadgets. Honestly, nice touch. Of course, you can use you could press L3, start crawling, R3 to contemplate life choices. Ah, oh my God, I was too slow. Oh, no, 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 get back here! Get back here, my friend! Okay. Okay, I somehow managed to escape the mailbox. But yes, let me show you what one of the Spectre Coins looks like, because we are going to need to collect those. Not only to collect all the tokens in general, but also just for the fact that we need to get the minigames, which... The last one, which requires us to get all 40 of these things. 40! One cool thing about this emulator, though, just to, just to uh, move this competition away from the Apes Kit for a moment, this version, just like the PS4 version, actually has achievements you can use. Ah, oh, frick! Frick! Okay. Dang it! Oh my god. So, as I was saying, just like the PS4 and PS5, if you play this with the achievement system on, you are able to actually activate the achievements for catching all the apes, collecting the tokens, 100% completing every level, which we'll get to when we get there. And that's really about it, because I believe there's also some for doing the time trials. I don't know if I want to do the time trials for this playthrough. That's, that's another thing. I'm really liking this game, but I don't know if I like it enough. To try to do like the fullest completion like I would with Crash, but that's a but we'll get to that when we when we go through the two endings in this game, which just like the other Epic Escape games, this one has as well. Anyway, molten lava. Yes, sir! Alright. Come on! <laughs> okay, but yes, actually, that's a good, that's actually a really good one, because... Because of the way this game work, these games work... This is one of those games where you absolutely had to play with a DualShock controller. There is no other way of playing this game, because you need both sticks for this game to work. The buttons is what you press for the gadgets. The right stick is the one that you use to activate and maneuver with those gadgets. Left stick obviously to move. And to move the camera you use the D-pad. However, instead of using that, let's say you don't let's say you don't like using that. You have the option to use the L2 button and then move the camera with the left stick. And of course the option is still move it with the D-pad. You're gonna want to use the L2 for later parts of this game, but for right now, it's just something to keep in mind. I don't really, I honestly don't know how, how I'm like, feeling so excited about playing this, because like, it's actually pretty freaking nice to really come back to playing older games like this again. I was really, although, I will say, I really do wish I could play this on the PS4, so I could be playing this a bit more authentically. It's a it's a minor nitpick at best, but you know, what can you do? That being said though, another thing, and this is okay, hold on a second. I, I wanna see that again. But yes, anyway, I was saying Limitations and stuff like this aside, well it actually just tells you where they are. No! Oh, 
Ha? Huh? Oh yeah! And the cook and the health system. Yes. In this game, there are no half cookies or like broken cookies like there are in two and three. You only get five hit points the entire time. Whole cookies are gone. If you fall or lose all your cookies, that's a life right there. You did great. But trust me, it just gets better from there. But I think that's actually where we're gonna stop because I feel like a good amount of video would be just covering each area in the game. Yeah, this would be a good stopping point for now. So yes, in the next part we'll be taking care of the Mysterious Age era of levels. But before we end the level actually, Let's go ahead and go back for that Spectre Coin. And the be the best part about these lo about the Spectre Coins and stuff like this for this game, well, pretty much all the games, but this one in particular. Second, you grab what you need. Press start. Press square. Yes, and you're out of there. You don't have to play to. You don't have to actually complete it to just to be able to get everything. And look at that. Nice and updated. But anyway, that's where we're pretty much going to end it off from here. This is our tour of out. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay insane. Stay natural fuel. Stay tuned to your life. And of course, as always. Actually, let me go ahead and save. And of course, as always. Stay warped. Actually, no. I got a better idea. Stay warm!